Hello guys, Survival Tech Nord here. This is the second video in the series, Easy Military vs. Chameleon Impasse. So today we're going to take a close-up look at the Chameleon Impasse and some of the accessories that go along with it. So stick with me, and let's get started. You are listening to the Emergency Broadcast Systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a signed narrative. If you're just joining us midway through the series, I'll put a link to the playlist for the video series, and you can check the rest of the videos out. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. The Chameleon Impasse is a kit that was put together for this channel. It's based on three different products from Chameleon Antennas. The Hybrid Micro, the Mill Whip, and the Jaw Clamp. At the core of the Chameleon Impasse is the Hybrid Micro. The Hybrid Micro is a custom 5 to 1 impedance transformer. Its power handling is 100 watts SSB or 50 watts in CW or data modes. Included with the Hybrid Micro is a 60 foot or 18.3 meter copper clad wire element, including cable winder. Its weight is about a pound or 453 grams and comes with an SO239 connector. Element and mill whip interfacing is done with a female 3 8 by 24 socket, while jaw clamp and counterpoise interfacing is done with a 3 8 by 24 male. Interfacing with the wire element is done with the included carabiner and strain relief, both of which are made from stainless steel. Top and bottom covers of the hybrid micro are made from anodized aluminium while the body is made from DuPont Black Dilrin. All other components are stainless steel. Finally, the Hybrid Micro is completely waterproof and submersible. Next up, the Chameleon Mill Whip. The Mill Whip stands at 10.8 feet or 3.29 meters. It also collapses down to 5 26 inch or 66 centimeter sections. The mill whip can be used standalone for 28 to 54 megahertz coverage. Alternatively, you can match it up with the hybrid micro for 1.8 to 54 megahertz coverage. Tubing for the mill whip is made from 7075 anodized aluminium, while the base itself is made from stainless steel. The whole point of the mill whip is to give you a variety of different temporary deployment options where you need a standalone vertical antenna. We'll get back to the deployment options later in the video. Next up we have the dipole jaw mount. The dipole jaw mount goes a little bit further than the jaw clamp you've seen in other videos, with the main difference being the inclusion of the dipole mount, which gives you multiple vertical and horizontal configuration options. If you've made it this far into the video, you're probably starting to understand that the components that make up the Chameleon Impasse are part of a larger, more comprehensive system. This is also where we start to see the differences between Alpha Antenna Philosophy and Chameleon Antenna Philosophy. Where Alpha Antenna is providing ready kits for you, Chameleon Antenna provides you with a toolbox to select the tools that you need. I like to call this the Lego box concept, but let's move forward. The three main options are the counterpoise kit, the tripod, and the Mill EXT or extension. The counterpoise kit is made up of four 25 foot or 7.62 meter radials. And each of those includes its own wire winder, which I like to bury in snow or sand when I'm deploying in those environments. By the way, you can find an excellent video from Chameleon about the importance of counterpoises and radials for vertical antennas on YouTube. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Next up, we have the Mill EXT. Like its name implies, it's actually an extension for the Mill Whip. The purpose of the Mill EXT is to expand performance and efficiency of the Mill Whip on higher bands. It achieves this by adding an additional 6.6 .6 feet or 2 meters to the overall length of the Mill Whip. It's also got a secondary purpose which I think is really cool. You can also use the Mill EXT as the second half of a dipole or horizontal configuration with the Mill Whip. 
This is all made possible with the jaw clamp and its included dipole adapter. There are those times when you simply don't have a structure to mount your antenna system on. For those cases, there's the tripod. This is a 10 foot or three meter telescopic tripod. It can carry up to 15 pounds or about seven kilos, and it's got a pretty wide base to keep the load stable. Here's a couple of different configurations from the user manual showing a tripod deployment. At five and a half pounds, I wouldn't like to carry this around in a backpack. But for a field station at a fixed location, absolutely. It's probably very difficult to comprehend the infinite amount of configuration possibilities with this type of system. In fact, I've spent about the last week trying to record and edit all of the different possibilities with the equipment that I have from Chameleon. But since I actually want to publish this series at some point, I thought that I would rely on the documentation that's included with their products. The first configuration I'd like to show you is an Invis configuration for 40 or 80 meters. You can do this as it's shown in the picture using the wire element and one counterpoise, or using the mill whip or the mill whip with the mill extension as the radiator and the wire element as the counterpoise. This can also work as temporary deployment from a vehicle. Now let's take a look at a couple of vertical configurations. So deploying the mill whip in vertical configuration is really simple. On the left you see the mill whip with the jaw mount and hybrid micro on a picnic bench. In the center diagram you see a man pack configuration. The radiator is a mill whip and the counterpoise is the wire element. These two vertical configurations work because of the trailing counterpoise. That's very important. With a vehicle deployment, you see the counterpoise is left out. The vehicle itself acts as the counterpoise or ground plane. We can also alleviate the need for a counterpoise by using a metal guardrail, balcony, or fence. Now for a couple of in-fed configurations. Deploying the MPOS or the hybrid micro with the 60 foot radiator is always going to be the best performing configuration you can use. Quite often when it's too cold to be in the radio room, I use the hybrid micro between a window and extend it out to a birch tree. Honestly, wire configuration options are only limited by your imagination. Finally, let's take a look at a couple of tripod deployment options. We use a tripod for rapid deployment or when there is no other option. Of course we might use them simply because they look cool. But seriously, ultimately what we're trying to do is maximize our deployment possibilities. That's what it's all about. Now it wouldn't be fair if I didn't tell you about the problems I've had with this system, which brings us to the complaints. One of the very first things that bothered me was the lack of a complete kit. The response from Chameleon was not everyone's requirements are identical, so it's better to allow customers to pick and, pick and choose from the products that they have on their website and put together their own comms kit. The biggest problem I faced with the Chameleon systems is the wire below minus 30 Celsius here in this Arctic environment. Now that wire is extremely good to begin with, but I contacted Chameleon anyway and I said, hey man, look, uh, this wire has become brittle and broken in this frigid cold we have here. Well, I couldn't believe the response from Chameleon. Here's the actual message they sent me. Honestly, I expected to get the crazy look and just be blown off, but this, this was good. The next thing I wanted to understand was why the hybrid micro had only 100 watt rating. Well, as it turns out, the hybrid micro is a high speed low drag version of the hybrid series meant for portable operators. It has a lower power rating, but it also has lower weight. So if I want to carry an amplifier in my backpack, I should choose one of the other hybrid series models. 
Now, one of the things I wasn't going to mention, but I think that it's fair to do so, was the lack of a carrying case for the kit. Alex Loop, Buddy Pole, Alpha Antennas, they all supply carrying cases with their systems. And I think many of your customers would appreciate that too. Finally, we've reached performance on air. The whisper results were actually better than I expected. I originally did the test earlier last week, but to be honest with you, I was really skeptical about the results. So I took a couple of hours and went through the bands on Whisper over the weekend. That's what you see here. I also spent exactly one hour on PSK 63, and I think one or two contacts on PSK 31. And these are the results from that, also last weekend. So it's actually working, and working quite well. Of course, we'll do more comprehensive testing on the antennas later in the series. Alright guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, where we share lots of different content from our channel buddies. With that, I say rock and roll, and thanks for watching.